introductions to microscopy in 1590 two dutch spectacle makers and father and son team hans and zacharias jansen what are those scientists hans and zacharias jansen created the first microscope then who is the father of microscopy father of microscopy zacharias jansen is the father of microscopy in 1667 Robert Hooke's famous book Micrographia is published which outlines Hooke's various studies using this microscope 1675 and then one Leonard Hooke who used a microscope with one lens to observe bacteria that is a simple microscope he observed bacteria in the first time who observed bacteria the first time and then one leuven hook observed bacteria in the first time in using simple microscope and then one leuven hook is also known as father of microbiology louis pasteur is known as father of modern microbiology and don't get confused confused and then one leuven hook is the father of microbiology and louis pasteur is the father of modern microbiology in 18th century as technology improved microscopy became more popular among scientists later on they discovered that combining two types of glass reduces the chromatic effect and we will get a more clear image next 1878 a mathematical theory linking resolution to light wavelength is invented by ernest abe ernest abe in 1878 Fritz Zernig was a Dutch physicist and winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1953 for his invention of phase contrast microscope. You should remember this point. Who invented the phase contrast microscope? Fritz Zernig, who invented phase contrast microscope in 1953, and he got or he awarded with Nobel Prize for that. 1938. just after the invention of the phase contrast microscopes comes the electron microscope developed by adas raska and nol nol and raska developed electron microscope 1981 3d specimen images possible with the invention of scanning tunneling microscope using scanning tunneling microscope we can process 3d specimen images of different cells it is discovered by jord binning and henrich rohrer you should remember this point scanning tunneling microscope it is developed by jord binning and henrich rohrer and electron microscope by nor and ernest raska resolution of microscope resolution is the ability of a lens what is resolution it is the ability of a lens to separate or distinguish between small objects that are close together what is resolution it is very very important in the case of microscope resolution is the ability of a lens to separate or to separate out or distinguish between small objects that are close together the smaller d is the better the resolution it is clearly described in an equation developed by ernest abe in 1870 we are going to discuss about this particular equation now abe's equation abe's equation d equal to 0.5 lambda divided by n sin theta what is d over here d is a minimal distance to distinguish and 0.5 is a constant and lambda is wavelength of light and n sin theta is a numerical aperture difference between simple and compound microscope characteristics in this table you can see simple microscope and compound microscope and its difference and also certain characteristics characteristics number of lenses simple microscope one to magnify objects but in the case of compound microscope 3 to 5 to magnify objects condenser lenses absent and present 
light source natural in the case of simple microscope and illuminator will be there in the case of compound microscope mirror type convex reflecting in the case of compound microscope one side is plane and the other side is concave level of magnification one level only in the case of simple microscope in the case of compound microscope it is higher level magnifying power up to 300 x means 300 times in the case of simple microscope and 2000 times resolution in the case of compound microscope adjusting magnification it is not possible in simple microscope but in compound microscope we can easily adjust the same use a basic level in simple microscope by professional for research purpose these are compound microscopes are mainly used for research purpose the simple microscope is basic level research that is used for just to see what the specimen is that's all but compound microscope it is used for research purpose father of microscopic anatomy who is the father of microscopic anatomy marcello malfigi marcello malfigi is the father of microscopic anatomy what is diopter diopter means it is a unit to calculate the power of a lens we all know that lenses are used in microscopes diopter is the unit to calculate the power of that lens a lens of 50 mm thickness has a diopter of 1000 divided by 50 so it is 20 the diopter of a 50 mm thickened lens is 20 the resolving power of the human eye is up to 200 micrometer or 0.2 millimeter you should remember that particular point microscope and its parts here you can see ocular lens of eyepiece where we observe the specimen that part is known as eyepiece diopter adjustment is there right side that part is known as head and no species also there left side objectives are there objective lenses are there 10x 40x 100x stage clip aperture diaphragm condenser illuminator light source is also there then arm right side mechanical stage coarse and fine adjustments are there stage controls base brightness adjustment and light source switch is also there light switch is in down side this is the common picture or image of microscope bright field microscope probably the most common microscope found in research clinical laboratories and also in teaching labs are bright field microscope specimen is dark and the contrasted by the surrounding bright viewing field that is a peculiarity of bright field microscope field is bright three types of light microscopes create detailed clear images of living specimens you should remember this particular point living specimens a dark field microscope the second one b phase contrast microscope microscope third one differential interference contrast microscope these three microscopes gives a clear images of living specimens dark field microscope it produces detailed images of living unstained cells and the organisms by simply changing the way in which they are illuminated only light that has been reflected or refracted by the specimen forms an image over here the field surrounding the specimen appears black while the object itself is brightly illuminated it can be used to identify certain bacteria such as trypanosoma pallidum which causes syphilis next phase contrast mic- microscope what is phase contrast microscope phase contrast microscopy is an op 
optical microscopy technique that converts phase shifts in the light that is the peculiarity phase shifts will be there in the light passing through a transparent specimen to brightness changes in the image it was first described in 1934 by dutch physicist fritz zernik it also helps to examine intracellular components of living cells at relatively high resolution example the dynamic motility of mitochondria it is also used to study microbial motility the shape of living cell detect structures like endospores and inclusion bodies differential interference contrast microscopy or dic what is dic it is similar to phase contrast microscopy dic uses polarized light to convert phase delays into intensity changes the effect is called differential because contrast is created only in neighboring areas unlike in phase contrast the dic image is not built globally over the entire image instead of that adjacent structures with different refractive indices are contrasted when in close contact with each other a living unstained specimen you should remember this particular point this is the important point what is happening over here a living unstained specimen appears brightly colored and seems to pop out from the background it means a 3d image these types of microscopes will give us a clear 3d image so a live unstained specimen appears brightly colored and seems to pop out it means 3d image we can directly observe a 3d image over here structures such as cell walls endospores granules vacuoles and nuclei are clearly visible fluorescent microscopes what is fluorescent microscope the fluorescent microscope excites a specimen with a specific wavelength of light and forms an image with the fluorescent light emitted by that particular object most common method of fluorescent microscopy is epifluorescence microscopy what is epifluorescence microscopy it employs an objective lens that acts as a condenser so specimen is illuminated from above rather than below that is a peculiarity of epifluorescence microscopy fluorochromes are used for staining specimens commonly used fluorochromes acridine orange it used for staining dna diamidino 2 phenyl indole or dapi stain it stains dna fluorescein isothiocyanate or fitc often attached to dna probes or to antibodies that bind specific cellular components tetramethyl rhodamine isothiocyanate tritc or rhodamine which is often attached to antibodies that bind specific cellular components these are the commonly used fluorochromes in fluorescence microscopy bacterial pathogens can be identified by staining with fluorochromes or they can also identify by tagging them with fluorescently labeled antibodies what is gfp many times repeatedly it's asked in different competitive exams what is gfp gfp means green fluorescent proteins it is a fluorescent protein that was originally isolated from the luminous organ of the jellyfish aquaria victoria by dr osamu shimomura it is widely used in different types of processes 
ഡോക്ടർ ഒസാമു ഷിമ്മമുറ മാർട്ടിൻ ചാൽഫി ആൻഡ് റോജർ വൈസീൻ ഷെയർഡ് നൊബൽ പ്രൈസ് ഇൻ കെമിസ്ട്രി ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ ഒസാമു ഷിമ്മമുറ മാർട്ടിൻ ചാൽഫി ആൻഡ് റോജർ വൈസീൻ ഷെയർഡ് നൊബൽ പ്രൈസ് ഇൻ കെമിസ്ട്രി ഫോർ ദ ഡിസ്കവറി ഓഫ് ജി എഫ് പി ഓർ ഗ്രീൻ ഫ്ലോറസൻ പ്രോട്ടീൻ ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് കോൺഫോക്കൽ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പി ഈസ് ഓൾസോ നോൺ ആസ് കോൺഫോക്കൽ സ്കാനിങ് ലേസർ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പി തിയോഡർ മൈമാൻ ഡിസ്കവേർഡ് ലേസർ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ ഫുൾ ഫോം ഓഫ് ലേസർ ലൈറ്റ് ആംപ്ലിഫിക്കേഷൻ ബൈ ദ സ്റ്റിമുലേറ്റഡ് എമിഷൻ ഓഫ് റേഡിയേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ ഫുൾ ഫോം ഓഫ് ലേസർ ലൈറ്റ് ആംപ്ലിഫിക്കേഷൻ ബൈ ദ സ്റ്റിമുലേറ്റഡ് എമിഷൻ ഓഫ് റേഡിയേഷൻ ട്രഡീഷണൽ ലൈറ്റ് മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്സ് ഗിവ്സ് എസ് മർക്കി ഇൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് ദി ഇമേജസ് ബട്ട് സി എസ് എൽ എം ഓർ കോൺഫോക്കൽ സ്കാനിങ് ലേസർ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പ് ഗിവ്സ് അസ് എ ഗുഡ് ആൻഡ് ക്ലിയർ ഇമേജ് ഹിയർ എൻ എപ്പർച്ച് പ്ലേസ് ഓൺ ദി എബ ഓഫ് ഓബ്ജക്റ്റീവ് ലെൻസസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നോൺ ആസ് സ്പേഷ്യൽ പിൻ ഹോൾ യു ഷുഡ് റിമെമ്പർ ദാറ്റ് പർട്ടിക്കുലർ പോയിന്റ് സ്പേഷ്യൽ പിൻ ഹോൾ ടു ബ്ലോക്ക് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ഫോക്കസ്ഡ് ലൈറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ പർപ്പസ് ഓഫ് സ്പേഷ്യൽ പിൻ ഹോൾ ടു ബ്ലോക്ക് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ഫോക്കസ് ലൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ഇമേജ് and eliminates other stray lights from parts of the specimen that lie above and below the plane of focus special pinholes are present in confocal microscopy capturing multiple two dimensional images at different depths in a sample enables the reconstruction of three dimensional structures within an object This process is known as optical sectioning. What is optical sectioning? Capturing multiple two-dimensional images at different depths in a sample enables the reconstruction of three-dimensional structures within an object. That is known as that process is known as optical sectioning in confocal microscopy or in confocal scanning laser microscope. That's the only light used to form an image from the plane of focus and much sharper image is formed here much sharper and good image is performed when compared with normal uh, microscopes inventor of confocal microscopy who has invented confocal microscopy marvin minsky do not forget this name marvin minsky is the inventor of confocal microscopy this is a structure of confocal microscopy laser confocal microscopic image of dendritic cells electron microscopes what are electron microscopes how many of them are there the first one is known as transmission electron microscope and the second one is known as scanning electron microscope in electron microscope electron replaces light as the illuminating beam in normal microscopes we use light source but here the things are entirely different and electrons are used instead of light over here transmission electron microscope a heated tungsten in the electron gun generates a beam of electrons a beam of electrons is generated by tungsten gun that is focused on the specimen by the condenser then magnetic lenses are used to focus the electron beam over here magnetic lenses are used to focus the electron beam column containing lenses and specimens should be in vacuum for what purpose electron electrons are deflected in the presence of air so we have to keep vacuum over here specimen scatters some electrons but those electrons pass through the specimen forms a clear image on a fluorescent screen only extremely thin slices 20 to 100 mm of specimens can be viewed using transmission electron microscope specimen preparation of transmission electron microscope how to prepare specimens specimens must be embedded in plastics for easy slicing 
takes a fixation process using glutaraldehyde and osmium tetroxide. These are used to stabilize the cell structures after dehydration of the specimen. It is to be soaked in unpolymerized liquid epoxy plastics. Then this plastic hardened to form a solid block. Then we have to cut the slices. How to cut the slices over here? Then cut the section from the block with a diamond knife or glass using a device called ultra microtom. You should remember this point ultra microtom. Then fixatives used glutaraldehyde and osmium tetroxide. These three you should remember from this slide. Specimens must be soaked into solutions of heavy metal salts such as lead citrate that also you should remember urinal acetate urinal acetate and lead citrate used to soak the specimens the lead and uranium ions for what purpose the lead and uranium ions bind to the structures of the specimen and make them more electron opaque Osmium tetroxide fixate, fixative also stains specimens. Then it mounted on a tiny copper grid and can be viewed. Negative staining method of specimen preparation. Specimen is prepared out in a thin film using phosphotungstic acid or with uranyl acetate. In this method means negative staining method of specimen preparation. In this method, heavy metals will not penetrate the specimen but render the background dark and here specimen appears bright in color. What types of samples can be viewed using negative staining method of specimen preparation? Structure of virus particles, bacterial gas vacuoles and other similar kinds of specimens can be viewed in this method. Shadowing method of specimen preparation. What is shadowing method? Here the specimen is coated with thin film of platinum or other heavy metal by evaporation at an angle of 45 degree from horizontal. Then metal hits the microorganism only on one side. Metal coated area appears as dark over here, then the other side appears as light. So we can easily observe the light area, the other side will be dark. It helps to study virus particle morphology, DNA and other bacteria, archaeal flagella, etc. That is a shadowing method of specimen preparation of term. This is the transmission electron microscope. You can see electron source, electromagnetic lens system, sample holder and imaging system that are incorporated in this diagram. Next the scanning electron microscope. What is scanning electron microscope? What is the function of that? Some produces an image from electrons released from atoms on an object surface here secondary secondary electrons are used. Some has been widely used to examine the surfaces of microorganisms in great detail. Most of the SEMs have a resolution of 7 nanometer or less. When electrons heat on specimens, secondary electrons are emitted from that particular area. First we have an electron source that electron source will produce some of the electrons and it will go and hit on the specimens and secondary electrons are emitted from that particular area of the specimens. Secondary electron hits on scintillator and form flashes of light. This signals, this light signals convert to form electrical current and amplified by a photo multiplier. That is the principle of scanning electron microscope. This is the diagram of scanning electron microscope. Thank you. 
If you like this channel, please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button for notifications. All the best for your exams.